you for watching. I pray that today's message will empower you to use your voice, help change the way you think, and energize your faith. If you'd like to follow along with Pastor's Notes, you can find them on the on-demand page of walkingbyfaith.tv or on our app. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday, a day to commemorate the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem as the King of Peace. Pastor Duane is teaching us the importance of the palm branches that the people were waving and the shouts of Yashana. Let's jump right in. And today, I'm very, very excited about the message today. And I, I simply put the title on this, Hosanna. That's the message for today, Palm Sunday. Uh, I'd like to, to start today with uh, John chapter 12. And uh, I want you to get ready. Get ready to shout. How many got your palm branch? Hosanna. Hosanna. All right. And uh, what's happening here in, in uh, John chapter 12 is it's about to be the Feast of Passover. Right? It's in the month of March. And uh, Jesus is in Bethany at the house of Mary and Martha. And he sends his disciples and they go and get a young donkey. It says, And the next day a great multitude that had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took branches of palm trees. Now, not coconut palms, but date palms, which are all over Israel, and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna. But actually, they didn't say Hosanna. They said, Yashana. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. You, uh, how many, you, Hosanna is just kind of like a religious word, you know? Like, what does it even mean? Hosanna! I don't know. But uh, what it actually does mean, is that they, they didn't say Hosanna, by the way. They, they said Yasha Na. Yasha is best translated in one word, victory. And Na, now. When we say that, victory... Now, Yasha, na, Yasha, na, victory, now. It's actually now victory, but we mess it up in English. All right, we actually know what day it is. It's a Sunday. It's March the 29th. It's A.D. 32. And Daniel prophesied this some 530 years before in Daniel 9, chapters excuse me, verses 25 and 26. And Zechariah prophesied about it. He said, Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, you daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation. Yasha. Lowly, riding on a donkey, a colt, the foe of a donkey. He's coming to you, and he has Salvation, Yasha, means to be rescued, to be set free, to be delivered, to be saved, to have divine salvation, to be rescued from earthly enemies, salvation from guilt, sin, punishment, to be helped, to be defended, to be delivered, to be given victory, Yasha. He's coming and he has salvation. It is five days before Passover. Now, I think this is interesting. They're out there, Hosanna, Yashana, Yashana. But in five days, they're going to be shouting, crucify him. How many of you know people can be fickle? Right? They, can be, they, can, they can go one way, they can go another way. A short time later. And it's seven days before the resurrection. So next Sunday... It's going to be Resurrection Day. Right? And he's coming from Bethany, where Mary and Martha live. And he's riding towards Jerusalem on this donkey. Uh, we've got a couple pictures here I, I wanted to show you. We're up on Mount Sculpus, right, which is right across from the Temple Mount. I think Jeannie and I, you can, you can see us down there. I'm 
talking to the group that we had with us in Israel. Right? So what Jesus would have been doing is Mount Scopus is right next to the Mount of Olives. And so a little bit over to what would be my right, your left, is the Mount of Olives. He'll be coming over on the donkey, right? And he'll be going down the Mount of Olives into that little valley there that's the Kidron Valley. And on the wall, a little to the right, you'll see the eastern gate. Then Jesus is going to go right in that gate. There's a close-up picture. Now, you'll, you'll notice that it's closed. Uh, when the Muslims conquered the, the, the Promised Land, uh, one of the things that they did was they uh, closed that gate. In fact, at first in 810, then it was reopened by the Crusaders, and then uh, Suleiman in 1187 reclosed it, and it was opened again, and then ultimately it was closed again by Suleiman the Magnificent in 1541. And the reason they kept closing it was because when the Messiah comes, He's supposed to come through that gate. In fact, the Bible says he will sit in that gate and he will eat bread. Right? And so they said, well, we don't want to leave the possibility for him to come in, so they closed it. And then they put a Muslim cemetery right in front of it. Right? Can, can we see, get it back? Maybe you can see the cemetery there. And they figured, well, second picture. No Jewish holy man. Oh, you can kind of see some of the tombs there. Right? No Jewish holy man would walk through a cemetery. Right? But how many of you realize that, that this Jewish holy man cemeteries are not really a problem? <laughs> right? And he can open a door that's been shut, or he can shut a door that's been open. Right? But when Jesus returns, he is going to walk through that gate. Right up, right on the other side of that gate is the Temple Mount. And that day he's coming down, and he's going to go through that little Kidron Valley, come right up, go right through that gate, and he'll be on the Temple Mount, right there. Right? Now, we've got a picture. This is the, the, the road today. They, you know, many of you have heard of the Via Dolorosa, the, the path of pain, but this is the Via Victoriosa. This is when Jesus is coming from Bethany, and they come out and they meet him with palm branches. Right? Now, you see a little paved road there, uh, and, and literally, like, only one car can go through at a time. Right? But when Jesus went down that road, it was a Roman road. It would have been a stone Roman road. The walls would not have been there. Right? And he comes down, and the people are gathering palm branches, and they're beginning to wave those palm branches, and they're shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, when Solomon the Magnificent closed that gate, he did not realize that he was actually fulfilling a prophecy that said that the gate would be shut. It's going to be shut until the Messiah shows up. Right? And in trying to keep the Messiah out, he actually fulfilled the prophecy that said that the gate would be shut. I just thought, that's awesome. We try to mess with God, and you just, you're just always messed up. All right? So he's coming on that coat, and he has salvation. And they're shouting, Hosanna, Yashana, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, it's not only a fulfillment of Bible prophecy, but it is also a tremendous revelation about who Jesus is. Right? And this revelation literally can lift you out of depression into joy and into victory. So we're going to talk for just a couple moments about the setting. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, God tells them that in the seventh month, on the 15th day of the month, they're going to have a feast, and it's the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days. Now, you may have heard of it as the Feast of Booths or Tabernacles, right? And actually, you are going to celebrate this feast in the millennium. During Jesus' reign, the Bible says that we will celebrate that feast. Now, in Revelation chapter 7, we find the church has been raptured, and the church is in heaven. You say, I don't believe in the rapture. Well, you poor thing. I'm going. You stay. <laughs> All right. But the church is up in heaven, 
They've been caught up, it says in 1 Thessalonians, to be with the Lord. And thus we will always be with the Lord. And it says, after these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, tongues, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands. And they're crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Now notice, it's a multitude nobody, nobody could number. There aren't just a few people that are going to be saved. But we're told they're doing th three things about them. We're told what they're doing, we're told what they're wearing, and we're told what they have in their hand. They're shouting to God with a loud voice. You say, I don't like loud. Get used to it. <laughs> Heaven is loud. We're told what they're wearing because in heaven there's a dress code. Huh? And everybody's got something white on, a white robe. And that white robe represents that you have been given righteousness. Not that you earned it, but that you have been given righteousness. And thirdly, in their hand is a palm branch. Now, the palm branch, all through the ancient world, is the symbol of victory. It is the blue ribbon, the checkered flag, the gold medal, the trophy. This is it, the palm branch. And it's in your hand because just like you've been given righteousness, you have been given victory. Given victory. Now, for God, this is the, it was all through the ancient world, but you'll find it all through your Bible. The temple was on the doors, on the walls, were called palm branches. The temple that Jesus will reign from in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 30, 41 and 42, I counted them 13 times. It tells us on the doors and on the walls, are carved palm branches. Listen, because God's house is a house of victory. And you can come in without victory, but when you understand that God wants to give you victory through what Jesus has done, you'll be able to shout like they're going to be shouting here in a few moments. All right? So the palm branch decorates the temple. It's on the doors. It's on the walls because God's house is a house of victory. His people are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. And the Bible said that he always leads us in triumph in Christ Jesus. Right? You are more, the Bible says, more than conquerors. More than conquerors. Two Greek words. One meaning victory and the other meaning super. When it says more than conquerors, it literally is saying super victorious. He doesn't just give you victory. He gives you super victory. The city of Jericho is called the city of palms because it's the first city in the promised land where God gave them victory. And the Bible says that Jesus triumphed over principalities and powers, right? And he always leads us in triumph. The victory that Jesus obtained is the same victory he always leads us into. Right? So this, this palm branch is a symbol of victory. Right? Now, the, the, the Feast of Booze, part of that is that you would go up and most of the time it would be on the roof of your house. The roofs were flat. And God says, what you're going to do is you're going to build a booth. Right? You're going to build yourself kind of like a little tent. And you live in it for seven days. Right? Seven-day feast. Right? Now, this feast is the most popular of all the feasts. There were seven feasts, but this was everybody's, everybody's favorite. Right? It's like having Christmas, your birthday, and the 4th of July all wrapped up in one. Right? This is like happy, happy, happy. It is the most popular. Everybody enjoys it. All right? And it's the feast of booths. And, and often in the Bible, it's simply called the feast. The feast. 
is Nehemiah is rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. The Bible tells us that they celebrate the Feast of Booze, the Feast of Tabernacles. And on the last day, actually, he said this, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet. I mean, like that diet. Eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions for those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy. This day is holy. Now remember that little phrase, this day, because it's going to come in handy later on when we get to Psalms 118. This day is holy to the Lord, our God. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, literally, on that last day, the, 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 the sages of Judaism tell us that God would impart supernatural joy to every single person. It was not mandatory that you could not be depressed, but you couldn't because God imparted supernatural joy. Now, you might be depressed, but God's not. Huh? And, and he is a God of victory. He's a God of joy. And this was a harvest time feast. And of course, it was an agrarian culture. And everybody would come and they'd bring their first fruits and they'd bring their tithes, right? And they're celebrating the feast, right? And l- listen, and God is imparting joy. And the devil cannot defeat you if he cannot steal your joy. Romans 15 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. You know, when you're in faith, there is a supernatural joy. But the last day of this feast of tabernacles, that last day is called Hosanna Day or Yashana Day. And, And it is the climax of what is happening. It is the day that God supernaturally imparts joy and is actually said to have been the highlight of the year. And on that day, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl had a palm branch, had a palm branch. And they were given a palm branch and they carried it around all day. Even when they're eating, all right, they're sitting there and they've got their palm branch. So you can take yours home. All right? You can take yours home today. All right? And they're celebrating that God delivered them out of Egyptian bondage, that he raised up Moses, that God smote the Egyptians, that they were delivered at the Red Sea, that God provided for them as they went through the desert, and then that God gave them victory as they went into the promised land. So they're living in these temporary lodgings, Remembering the time that God brought them through the desert, provided for them supernaturally. And they, they've got their palm branch, all right? And every so often, they would shout and they would say, Yashana! Yashana! Just as they go through in the day, they'd be shouting and they'd be going, Victory now! Salvation now! Now, deliverance, now. Yasha, victory or salvation, and na is now. And again, we're not going to use Hosanna anymore because it's just too religious. You don't even know what that means. But Yasha, na. Now notice, it is Yasha when? Now. It's not Yasha tomorrow. And it's not Yasha yesterday. It is Yasha Now, now Yasha literally means to be freed, to be avenged, to be delivered, to be defended, to be helped, to persevere, to be rescued, to be saved, to bring salvation, to get victory, health, freedom. It can be translated save now or victory now. And it's the highlight of the day. Everybody gets to gather at the temple and they make the Hosanna Declaration, a declaration of faith for the coming year, a declaration of faith for the present, and a declaration of faith about the coming Messiah. 
There's 15 steps on that temple. And the Levites would cover those steps. And they would be singing literally all day long. And they're just singing the same songs again and again and again and again and again. How many think we sing them too long? Why do we have to sing that song so many times? Listen, you ain't seen nothing yet. All right? All day long, they're just singing these same songs again and again and again. All right? They're in the outer court. They're there all day. They're repeating those songs. All right? And it's a day of joy. It's a praise celebration, literally a 24-hour praise celebration. All day, they're declaring victory. And they would turn, the people would, at different directions. In fact, all four directions. And they'd shout, Yashana, Yashana, Yashana. And they're shaking this thing. Right? I'm trying to keep mine from breaking too early. Right? Back here, Yashana. And they're shouting. Right? God is imparting supernatural joy. And again, the sages said, you could not be sad even if you wanted to be sad. And that's why Nehemiah said, this is a day of joy. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. And again, the highlight is the Yashana declaration on the last day of the feast. Psalms 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. You know, now, we quote that a lot. We say that about Monday. We say that about Tuesday. We say that about Saturday. But you know what? There is, the, the, it literally is referring to one day. The day the Lord has made is the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. The day the Lord has made is Yashana Day. That's the day it's talking about. We will rejoice remember that, and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Have you ever noticed that Jews never write books about why we should be poor? Right? They're literally, they're believing for prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Save. Strong says it means to be rescued from earthly enemies. Right? And they're going to make this proclamation, and they're going to make it with all their faith and all of their strength because they literally believe that the prosperity that they will have for the next year is decided on that day when they pray and say, Oh Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Now, if you believe how blessed you are going to be in the next year, depending on what you did at one particular time in one day, how many of you know you'd shout? You'd be shouting. All right? That's Hosanna Day. And we will rejoice. And remember, there's this supernatural joy. The Hebrew word there is gil. And it is the strongest word for joy that can be used in the, in the Hebrew language. It means to be glad, to be joyful, to rejoice, to greatly rejoice, exceedingly, and I love this definition, to rejoice with violent emotion and spin around. Oh, now, if you're a Presbyterian, this will freak you out. <laughs> I mean, they're rejoicing, and they're waving their palm branch, and they're shouting, Yashana, and they're twirling themselves around. Woo! That's good. You know, the best way we can describe this probably is an end zone dance. <laughs> you seen somebody make a touchdown and just go crazy? Yeah, that's it right there. Save now I pray, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, I pray, send Yasha prosperity. Send it now. So it's victory now, salvation now, peace now, prosperity now. Again, to be free, to be avenged, to be delivered, to be defended, to receive help, 
to persevere, to be rescued, to bring salvation, to get victory, to get health, to get freedom. Again, translated most commonly, save now. Could be translated, victory now. Again, not yesterday, not tomorrow. The faith part is now. Now faith is. Right? It's a day of joy. They're praising God all day. There's a victory declaration, and they release their faith to be blessed by God and to prosper for the whole year. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. And he's coming lowly on a donkey, but he's coming to them in the name of the Lord. He's coming, and they're recognizing it. And again, it says in John 12, And the next day a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took palm branches, palm trees, and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, Yashana, Yashana, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Now, they were used to Yashana, but it was at the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. It was Yashana Day, but it's not the Feast of Tabernacles. It's the beginning of the Feast of Passover, which has nothing to do with the Feast of Tabernacles. But here's what they understood that day, and I want you to catch this, all right? That Yashana is not a day. Yashana is a person. Yashana is Jesus. He comes to bring you salvation now. Victory now. Healing now. Prosperity now. Deliverance now. Freedom now. Freedom now. And they recognized Although in their tradition, they had been yoing Yashana on a certain day, but they decided, no, it's just not a day. Yashana is really about a person, and that person is right in front of us right now, and they begin to welcome him, and they begin to shout, Yashana, Yashana, Hosanna Day comes, right? They would praise, they'd declare victory, they would declare prosperity, right? And they were, they were imparted joy, supernatural joy on that day when they would begin to shout. And I want you to stand up this morning. I want you to wave this around a little bit. Get your palm branch out. What does that palm branch stand for? It's victory. It's victory now. That's what it is. It's a victory because we are God's people and God's people are a people of victory. Right? Yasha, now. Now, Yasha is salvation. And salvation does not just mean you're forgiven from your sins. Right? It means that you're forgiven from sin, but it means there's peace. It means there's freedom. It means there's deliverance. It means there's healing. It means there's prosperity. Whatever you need, Yashana, Jesus came and he purchased victory for you. The saints are in heaven and they've got white robes because they're given righteousness, but they've got palm branches because they were given victory. And if you don't wait to heaven to be given victory, he's given it to you now. Yasha. Yasha, not next month, not when you die and go to heaven. No, it's now. He obtained that victory with a blood-stained cross in an empty tomb. He defeated the devil and he arose. He said, I'm the one that was dead, but I am alive forevermore. And I've got the keys of death and of Hades. So here we go. Are you ready? All right. One direction right here. Get ready, start waving, go, Yashana! Victory for my family! Victory for my finances! Victory in my business! Victory in my body! I call healing, Yashana! 
All right, next direction. Yes, you know, victory in my mind, victory in my relationships, victory in my, my family, victory in everything I touch. Yes, you know, yes, you know. All right, next. Yes, you know, victory in my emotions, victory from my past, peace now. Yes, you know, yes, you know, victory now. Salvation now, freedom now, prosperity now, now. One more. Yes, you know, peace for our minds, freedom from guilt, self-control, Holy Spirit led, redeemed by the blood, victory now, healing now, prosperity now, salvation now, now, now. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yashana! Woo! Yashana! Victory now! Yashana! 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 Healing now! Victory now! Freedom now! In Jesus' name! Healing now! In Jesus' name! He's our healer! He's our victory! He's our salvation! He's our peace! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Lord! If you don't know you're right with God today, and you say, I want to be right, I want to be forgiven, I want you to bow your head with me and pray this prayer from your heart. Just say, oh God, I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe his blood paid for my sins. I believe that he rose again. And I give him all of my heart and all of my life. I'm going to live for him every day. And I thank you, you've heard my prayer. That your blood washed me from my sin that my past is gone, that I'm your child today and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, if you prayed that prayer from your heart, God heard your prayer, and you are forgiven and right with God. Now, you've taken your first step into the kingdom, but we want you to keep growing spiritually. I wrote a book full of bullet points to help you keep growing spiritually, and I want to send it to you absolutely free of charge. You can download it or let us know. We'll send you a hard copy absolutely free. Keep on growing. Keep on living for the Lord. God bless you, and we love you. If you just prayed that prayer with Pastor Dwayne, you're making one of the best decisions of your life. How awesome. Just as Pastor said, we'd love to send you a free copy of his book, Your New Life. Log on to walkingbyfaith.tv and request a copy of this book be mailed to you or download it right there instantly. Either way, it's absolutely free and a great resource for you to have. Today's program is available on Roku and Amazon Fire TV by searching Walking by Faith. Or you can check out our app where you can download any message for easy offline listening. Walking by Faith is used to change lives all around the world on and off the air. We would love for you to partner with us and help make a difference in others' lives by logging on to walkingbyfaith.tv. If you are in need of prayer or God is doing amazing things in your life, we would love to connect with you. Contact us by phone, email, or through our app. You can also find us on your favorite social platform by searching WBF TV. Have a safe and blessed week.